Hi everyone and welcome to my review of Ubuntu 1104, codename Natty Narwhal. Well, this review is aimed more at people who are new to Ubuntu, but there's something in it for everyone. And I've put some chapter timings in the description below, so you can skip around to different sections of the video. So enjoy! The first part will be showing you the installation, including the installer slideshow and how to dual boot with Windows 7. To get the choice between trying Ubuntu or installing it, so if you click try, it gives you a chance to well, try it out, see if it works in your system, see if you like the look of it. The system gets loaded into memory. If you decide you don't like it, simply restart your computer and you'll be back to your old operating system. Since I don't have the 3D drivers installed at the moment, I've got the GNOME Classic desktop. It's all running good, so let's go and install it. So yes, English. So we tick this option here to install third-party software. So that installs an MP3 audio decoder, a flash player, MP4 videos, and a variety of other video and audio codecs. So it's detected that I have Windows 7 installed on this virtual system. So I've got the option to install Ubuntu alongside, so that'd be dual booting. Or I could replace Windows 7 with Ubuntu, that'd be a single operating system. Or I can choose something else. I'll go into that something else option in a different video. It's a more complex method of manual partitioning. This method of installing Ubuntu alongside is really simple. I can simply resize the amount I want to allocate to each system of Windows 7 or Ubuntu. Simply drag that slider along. So we'll just go with that. Um, yeah, install now. No, yep, we'll continue that. Yeah, as simple as that to set up the hard drive partitioning. It's located where I am, yep, London, yeah, close enough. I choose a keyboard layout, yeah, for my, for my keyboard it would be United Kingdom, extended win keys. I choose the username and administrator password. I'll go with quids. Oh, computer name, quids virtual box. Uh, just go with whatever it gives you there. Choose a password. I should choose something better than that. But since it's a virtual system, it doesn't really matter what I go for. Uh, I'm going to take the option to log in automatically. It could require a password to log in on an encrypt home folder. So let's take a look at the slideshow. Ubuntu is packed with features to make your computer delightful to use. This version introduces the Unity desktop interface, a brand new way to find and manage your, your applications. We'd like to show you some cool things to look for in your new operating system. So if we scroll through this. We've got to find even more software. The Ubuntu Software Center has thousands of new applications ready for your computer. I'll show that working later on in the video. Mobilize your digital life. All Ubuntu users get a free Ubuntu One account. As an online cloud storage, Ubuntu One allows you to sync all kinds of files online so you can access them anywhere. Sync bookmarks, contacts, music and pictures all across your computer. Take everything everywhere with Ubuntu One. Take your music with you. Ubuntu comes in the amazing Banshee music player with advanced playback options and the Ubuntu One music store built in. It's simple to queue up perfect songs and it works great with your CDs and portable music players. And you can also install Rhythmbox like we used to have in older versions of Ubuntu. Email and chat. Messaging menu has lots of features to make online communication effortless. Chat helps you log in to all your instant messaging accounts, including MSN, Jabba and Facebook. And it also supports Skype. Browse the web. Ubuntu includes Mozilla Firefox for fast, safe web browsing. You can also choose from alternative browsers from the Ubuntu Software Center. Flash gets installed because I chose the option to install third party software earlier in the installer. So, write and present with ease. LibreOffice is a free office suite packed with everything you'll need to create impressive documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. LibreOffice tries its best to work with other office software. I customize Ubuntu. At the heart of Ubuntu's philosophy is the belief that computing is for everyone. Thank you. Thanks again for choosing Ubuntu. Ubuntu is designed to be easy and safe, so don't hesitate to explore. Well, the installer's finished. There we are, just click restart now. 
Now we boot out, we get the grab screen to choose between operating systems it got installed. So our Windows 7 or Ubuntu. And a bit of a change in colour scheme here because it's now purple and white. We get the error message about not having the hardware required to run Unity. Uh, just install the graphics drivers. There we are. For part 2, take a look at the pre installed software that Ubuntu will give you to get you started. So for web browser, you get Firefox version 4. And you get an Office style application called LibreOffice. This LibreOffice writer, equivalent to Microsoft Word. If I open up a recent document, I install notes for an older version of Ubuntu, Maverick Meerkat. And it's quite out of date, I really need to get around to rewriting this at some point. So it can save to a variety of formats, including the older versions of Microsoft Word and newer versions right up to 2007. So it can also save to HTML and some basic text file formats. So for spreadsheet, you get LibreOffice Calc, again very similar to Excel. There's a front end to LibreOffice. As I said, you can edit various types of documents. So you've got text documents, spreadsheet presentations, drawing and formulas. Database isn't installed by default, but can easily be added through the Software Center. So if I open up Presentation, again, similar to PowerPoint. So other applications we get, so under Accessories, we've got Calculator, Character Map, Disk Usage Analyzer, Search for Files, Text Screenshot, Terminal, Text Editor, and Tomboy Notes. We'll take a look at a few of them. There's Calculator, Disk Usage Analyzer, text editor, which is called gedit, and Tomboy Notes, which is like a post-it note style program. There are some basic games included. There's Ale Riot Solitaire, Gbrony, Mahjong, Mind, and Sudoku. That's it, Solitaire, Gbrony, Mahjong, Mind, and Sudoku. So on to graphics, so we've got LibreOffice Draw, Shotwell Photo Manager, and Simple Scan. So under internet, so we've got Empathy Internet Messenger, Evolution Mail, which is similar to Microsoft Outlook, Firefox Web Browser, Gribber Social Client, Remote Desktop Viewer, Terminal Server Client, and Transmission for Downloading BitTorrents. Empathy, so Empathy can cope with various types of instant messenger. So there are Facebook, Google, IRC, MSN, Yahoo, and quite a few others. Gwibber can link with Twitter, Facebook, and Identica. Under multimedia, we've got Banshee, Brazio Disk Burner, Desktop Bit Recorder I've installed so I can record this screencast, Movie Player, PTV Video Editor, and Sound Recorder. So this is Banshee Media Player, which can play MP3 music and videos. There's a couple of music stores, the Amazon MP3 store and the Ubuntu One store. If you buy any songs from these stores, a percentage of profits will go to Canonical and the Gnome Foundation. That's Brazio Disc Burner. There's Movie Player, which can handle various types of movies. Although, during the install, you should tick the Install Third Party Software or Third Party Codex. There's PTV, which is a fairly simple video editor. So, Themes and Tweaks. So this used to be under system and then preferences for older versions of Ubuntu. And there's also system. The better way to view those system preferences is over here, system settings, which gives you a window style control panel, which is much easier to edit settings on here, more in one place. So if I wanted to edit the screensaver, go here. You can choose from various types of screensavers that are pre-installed. And system monitor, which is quite high memory usage at the moment, but that is because I'm recording this video. Part 3 the desktop features, including Unity Taskbar and Compiz. An important feature of Linux desktop environments is the ability to customise them. And while I appreciate it's not necessarily for everyone, I mean, you do get quite a nice desktop environment out of the box with Unity, you may want some more fancy effects. Now, to get these really nice effects, you can install a program called Compiz. To get that, just go into Software Center and install CCSM, 
which is the Compiz Config Settings Manager. And I've also changed the mouse cursors, so I'm using the KDE coloured mouse cursors, you know, the Oxygen Cursor Theme Extras. There's various wallpapers pre-installed in Ubuntu 11.04. Let's quickly scroll down all these. I showed them all in action in the beta review. I had to edit the fancy desktop effects. I want to open Compiz. You can see I've enabled wobbly windows, as well as my animations on well, opening, closing, minimising, and the shading around the edge. Plus there's, there's all these other effects that can be enabled. So we've got Desktop Cube. That was a favourite of mine in older versions of Ubuntu. So we've got the window decoration, that's that shading around the edge. But by default it's black. I've changed it to a sort of purple. We've got orbly windows. We've got the various animations on opening, close, minimise, etc. Edit those. Yep, various different types you can put in. And yeah, quite a lot of effects you can enable there. There's also some effects on the Unity bar at the left hand side there. So you've got experimental, you can change the size of it. You can also change some of the animations there. So on the subject of customising the Unity bar, we can move the application icons around the bar to a different position there. You can remove them. And if you want to put them back, drag and drop them in. That's all very easy to do. If the Unity bar is hidden behind an application, you can get it back by just hovering the mouse over on the left hand side the bar reappears. Simply moving the mouse along the left hand side without stopping won't make the bar appear. That's quite a nice user friendly feature there. The Windows key or Super key as it's also known in Linux also plays quite an important feature in Ubuntu and Unity. Holding it down you can see the different number shortcuts that appear there. So if I hold down, if I press number one it will open up my home folder. Windows key and S is the workspace switcher. That's four different desktops you can work on at once. There's Windows key and A, applications, and F for files and folders. Also T for rubbish bin, trash can. Part four, installing software. Look at the software center and a few applications to try out. Now, installing applications in Ubuntu is very easy with the software center. It has thousands of applications easily available at the click of a button. So have a look at a few of them. It's Google's Chromium web browser. That's an open source browser project that aims to build a safer, faster, and more stable way for all internet users to experience the web. That's a good alternative to Firefox. So for graphics editing, there's a program called GIMP, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. So GIMP is an advanced picture editor. You can use it to edit and enhance and retouch photos and scans, create drawings, and make your own images. Lots of tools are available. You can sharpen and resize photos and remove dust and red eyes, for example. Another image editing program called Inkscape, which allows you to create and edit what are called scalable vector graphics, which means these images will look crystal clear no matter how much you resize them. I mentioned about video editing earlier in a video with PTV, which is fairly simple. There's a more complex video editor here called OpenShot. So it's a non-linear video editor, which can create and edit videos and movies for many popular video, audio and image formats. So features include multiple tracks, composting image overlays and watermarks, support for image sequences, keyframe animation, video and audio effects, as well as transitions, 3D animation and the ability to upload videos directly to YouTube and Vimeo. And there's quite a selection of games, including some like puzzle games, the Zaz, arcade action puzzle. The goal is to get rid of all incoming balls by rearranging their order and making them triplets. And more complex 3D games. The Sour Bratton, last-paced 3D first-person shooter game. And final part: conclusion. Here's what I reckon of Ubuntu 11.04. The ease of use. Yet yeah, it's very easy to use. I'm sure someone who's new to Ubuntu can take to it quite easily. 
the styling is really good looking and very well styled. Customization, here's where it falls down a bit. Unity taskbar can't be moved and there's limited customization on the application menus. It's not easy to adjust the order of the applications, which items appear in your favorites. You can't clear recent documents very well. The boot up speed, but it's slightly faster than Ubuntu 10.10, but it's still a bit slow. I've got a few tricks on how to make it go a bit quicker, and I'll show those in a later video. Uh, there's a number of bugs, but none found. One program per job, yep, yeah, absolutely. Number of installable programs, there's quite a lot, but there still could be more in the software centre. Fortunately, there's quite a lot of repositories that can easily be added. Well, overall, I reckon 85% is a brave step forward in offering a more modern Linux desktop environment. However, it's not really for everyone's taste. We have to wait another six months until we see a more customizable version of Unity. There, yeah, thanks for watching. Please thumbs up, like the video, and subscribe. I'll see you later.